Good evening. Uh, when I was 17 years old, I crashed my first car. I tipped it upside down on a country road. It was my first experience of black ice. Nine other cars crashed on the same piece of road that evening. But both of those are just excuses. I'd become a statistic. That one event has shaped my life. It's driven my passion, which is to understand driving ability and how to protect against failure. It's one of the most important things that we need to do in society. Learning to learn has become important for machines, but it's important for humans too. So I learned to drive again. I went to the same school as Alan Prost and Damon Hill. I then transferred that learning to skeleton bobsleigh. I slid on Olympic grade tracks and learned to use my body as a sensor and as a control system. In skeleton, the sled becomes an extension to your body. The car becomes a complex exoskeleton. You need to have a very good model in your head before you can control the car correctly. Horses and humans collaborate together. Two forms of intelligence, two skeletons combined. You see the same in motorsport, with a spotter assisting a NASCAR driver, a co-driver assisting a rally driver, and a passenger assisting a sidecar rider. Driving intelligence has become, has reached really its hype cycle now, at the top of the hype cycle. Now we have self-driving cars coming to our roads. So the automobile has finally arrived. But are we all destined to become passengers? Or is there a different future for us? In 2012, Chris Gerdes gave a talk, the future race car, 150 mile an hour and no driver. What you see here is Robocar. We brought that to the streets of Paris with Roborace earlier this year. So five years. Max Verstappen took 17 years to go from a child to the Formula One, the youngest Formula One driver. It's an incredible feat, but how long will it take an AI driver to take a car to that level of performance? And really, is racing the right environment to train AI in? If you think our roads are much more complex than racetracks, they include objects of all sizes. They come at you from all directions. The traffic scenes are complex. They include the unexpected. So Le Mans comes very close to complexity that we're talking about here. Uh, um, 60 cars on the track, 180 different drivers, each with their own personality, each with their own driving styles. Coping with traffic is critical. Otherwise, you make mistakes like this. But motorsport has now reached the limits of the human brain. Not the cognitive limits, but the safety limits, the impact limits. Safety is critical in motorsport. It dominates the sport. Yet in most motorsport, advanced driver assistance systems are banned. Motorsport has lost its relevance to the road industry. Racing incidents are sometimes no more than lack of situational awareness. And there are no systems inside the car to, us to help the driver, just the wing mirrors. In this day and age, it's kind of crazy. So when Stanford run their 
autonomous car up Pikes Peak. Every uh, inch of the 12.4 mile hill was clear. Every one of the 156 turns taken on the optimal racing line. So now we're ready for a new challenge. A challenge that pushes the boundaries of cognition, of human intelligence, challenges that will see competition on the real roads. And by real roads, we mean freeways, motorways, rural roads, urban roads, mountain roads, roads that are filled with autonomous traffic, like trucks, buses, cars, vans, motorcycles, fully autonomous traffic that cars have to race through to really push the limits of intelligence within our vehicles of the future, to drive that innovation that we need in the technology that will keep us safe on the roads. So imagine Pike's Peak, but filled with traffic. Imagine a competition where it's more about cognitive power rather than mechanical power. How intelligent you are, how you manage risk, how you avoid incidents. Imagine any movie car chase you've ever seen, or computer game you may have played. We're starting to see reality converge, and we're bringing these things to life with Robo Race. But wait, all of this technology and motorsport, where's the human element? Won't technology just kill motorsport completely? Is that really what we want to see? I think, in fact, the opposite is true. Historical racing drivers will be brought back to life. They'll be encoded in the software that races the cars. They'll win, and then you'll download their software into your car as an intelligent co-driver or race day trainer. Real humans, too, will compete, but connected remotely to the robocars in full motion simulators. Humans will be able to demonstrate their skill in combining with AI showing how they can judge situations better than AI. Now you have two cars head to head, one full AI, one powered by a human. It's society's big, biggest battle, human versus AI. It's the competition we all want to see. It's the competition we've seen in chess. But it's not a fair competition. Computers have access to the control systems of the car much more advanced than humans do. Humans are constrained by the mechanical legacy of an 1800s design. The steering wheel, the throttle, and the brake, well, they're just like the keyboard. They were designed a long time ago, before we moved to electronic systems. Future systems future human-machine interaction will be haptic, whole body, and as we heard earlier, even facial, for communication of both emotion and intent. Our visual and auditory systems will be augmented with data, data that's come from machines, but that humans interpret that we use in order to guide the vehicle and make better decisions. So we're not replacing the human. Intelligence can actually enhance our human capabilities. So brain-computer interfaces is really the next step. With this, the computer, so the wetware, the hardware, and the software will combine to produce a unique superintelligence. It will give us capabilities that we've never had before. It will enhance AI beyond where AI can go at the moment. And that's really important. The competition formats that we're looking at will actually ensure that humans are always kept safe. But we're able to drive innovation 
in the cars that will keep you safe on the roads as well. So mobility is freedom. In the future, these systems should enhance that mobility, enhance our freedoms. They shouldn't contain us. Motorsport is evolving. Driving super intelligence will change your reality. So I suggest we all buckle up because the future is coming faster than you can think. Thank you very much.